Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to start an exploration of the classic Charles Wilcoxon book, Wrist and Finger Stroke Control. So it looks like this, at least the original does. I don't know if there's a new version of it out there. Uh, and when I was growing up, this was one of my favorite books to work on. And I still use this book today. I use it to teach. I definitely use it for myself all the time. I feel like it keeps me young. So we'll probably do most of the book over several videos. I'm not sure I'll do the whole thing, but I'll do the pages that I, I like the best. And I'll show you different ways to use the book that aren't stated in the book or the introduction. So we'll start out by just talking about this introduction that Charles Wilcoxon writes. And he wrote some great introductions to his books. I know you all can read, but I'm going to read it to you and give you my opinions and feelings about it. So he starts out with, this book is written for the purpose of assisting the modern drummer in developing and achieving a high degree of stick technique through the coordinated control of the forearms, wrists, and finally, the fingers. Each exercise is an individual four-bar study in swing. He puts that in quotations. The rhythmic continuity is so arranged that each phrase is a progressive step forward in achieving this goal, or any chosen combinations may be grouped into innumerable drum or tom-tom solos, a la Gene Krupa. So, you know, that was the thing back then, sing, 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 that kind of thing. And you could tell from the solos that Wilcoxon wrote in, in uh, the Swing Studies uh, book and this, that he was really into that stuff. Also the book Rolling in Rhythm, which is another great book. Going on, progressing from the arms and wrist studies, we proceed to the ultimate in drumming technique, the finger stroke, he puts that in bold. This form of drumming is by no means a new fad in the drumming world. It is merely another phase created by drumming demands over the past many years. Great power is not possible, neither is it expected. But if the drummer is seeking fast, sharp, and clean flowing technique, the finger stroke is the end, in quotations. I think that's very cool that he wrote that. So he was very big into finger stroke, and all the great drummers back then used it constantly. Following are a few basic rules or suggestions on how to practice and finally master this great art. First, place the stick in the left hand in a natural relaxed playing position, approximately four inches from the butt end with the thumb extended for upward. So he's talking about the left hand now, which would be the traditional grip. And he's talking four inches into the stick, which is considered the balance point, depending on your stick. Then you do this. So this is what he's talking about, thumb up. Raise the stick with the index finger of the right hand to a well up position and let the tip fall naturally to the practice pad or drum. This tap should rebound. That's what he's talking about. So the rebound, letting the stick bounce. Now place the drumstick in the right hand also in a well balanced position between the thumb and the index finger. So you're going to do the same thing about three and a half to four inches up here. Move the middle finger to a natural position under the stick. So right here, we're not gripping with that finger, the middle finger, we're moving it under the stick with these other two guys here. With the right hand completely relaxed, this stick will also rebound. These rebounds or taps are likewise kept in motion by tapping the middle finger upward against the underside of the stick. Again, no wrist action. Practice until all rebounds are in rhythm. That's what he's talking about. Okay? So this page one is uh, called number one, and it's uh, wrist stroke studies. So he meant for you to play these with your wrist, but it's not a tight wrist like this. It's a loose wrist like this.
All right, so you don't want to play like this. You want to play like this. That's very, very important. So you are using a lot of wrists, but you're also using fingers. Okay, so when you, you do your wrist stroke, you're going to use a little bit of finger movement, but mostly wrist. I think of these things in ratios. I've talked about this before on this channel. So these kinds of wrist stroke would be about 70% wrist and 30% fingers. So I'm going to play some of these for you. And we'll do page one. We'll do this at 136. And I'll do each exercise twice. One, two, three, four. Important here is the distinction between the accent and the unaccented notes. So if you're playing just sixteenths, they should be about two to three inches off the head, but the accents should come up about eight inches. That's really, really important. A lot of times when I teach, uh, the students will come back after doing this and play it like this. So they're playing it correctly as written, but uh, you can't discern the accents necessarily from the rest of the 16th. So you need to have as much dynamic difference between the accents and the other notes as possible. So that's match grip. Another good way to play this, as well as uh, all of these exercises in this book, is to swing it. All right, so if we swing it, we want that metronome to be on two and four. So in this case, we'll put it on 110, but that's going to equal quarter note equals 220, all right, because it's on the uh, uh, two and four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Get the idea that's very very important so when you do these on drum set again back in the day that was the thing people played uh you know this kind of stuff on the toms a la sing 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 another way to do this is to do diddles on all the accents i do this with my book as well so you could do this very fast uh so let's let's say 140. one two three four So that's another really good way to practice. And then you can apply some different stickings. One of my favorite, of course, is the paradiddle uh, because it's like the perfect sticking, right? 
uh, all two alternating strokes and a double. And to play those, you'd play the sticking and then you'd play these accents. So a good tempo for that is back at 110. And I'll show you a little of that. One, two, three, four. And then you can also swing that. So now this becomes two and four. One, two, one, two, three, four. So these are great fun and so good for you. So that's how I would practice page one of this. You see the different ways. And every page has several different ways to do it. So in this series, we'll talk all about how to practice this book. When we get to the finger stroke studies, we'll do that. There's also some arm studies in this. We're going to talk about that because that's a, that's a hot topic with me. But, um, but so stay tuned. And over, you know, a large period of time, We'll get to most of this book. Hope you enjoy this. We'll see you soon.